Hi, I'm Dan from Real Mac Software, and today I wanted to go over some of the options that are available in Squash. Um, you may not be aware of some of these options if you've been using Squash for a while, but I thought it'd be handy to just kind of have a look in the preferences and see uh, what some of the various options do. So I've already launched Squash here, and we're going to open up the preferences, which you can do uh, by hitting this little button here, and this uh, opens this preference window for us. Now, one of the uh, main things that's probably down to your workflow, really, and how you work, uh, you're going to want to set how you save files. Um, by default, it's set to automatically save files too, which is kind of like the default always ask option. So if I drag an image onto here, let Squash do its thing, and then when it's finished, it's going to ask us where to save that image. Um, so I can pick a location here. Um, so that I mean that's the general setting I usually have it on uh, but you know you might have a different workflow so um, one of the other things which is quite handy you can tell Squash to always save it to the original location and that means it's going to overwrite the file any or any files that you drop onto Squash so now I've switched it to that you'll see if I drop on uh, this image here it's going to compress it and save it right back to the same location there we are so that's uh, so this image is now being compressed you know and this is very handy if you if you always use squash like that you know if you, if you have uh, some web images you've got your settings all set you just drop them onto squash and then it will compress them for you you know, you know you don't need to do anything tell it where to save it it's pretty good um, so what else we've got the other location which basically lets you pick pick a folder so I'll create a new folder there and we can pick that and that is always going to now save files to that folder um, so if I drag this into here and let it do its thing there we go and if we go and open that folder we'll see the file has been compressed into there which again is also a very handy option um, and you'll notice it's appended a little uh, dash squashed uh, suffix to the end um, but you know you can you can change that to, to whatever to whatever you find useful so now if I go and compress it again it's done it uh, so there we go it's a appended web to the end which which is very handy um, so those are some of the little features uh, there um, there's also a bunch of other features in here. You can um, always set it to remove JPEG metadata. I do this because um, it's nice to remove any private information from the JPEG, you know, because you might be sharing it online. Um, so I, by default, that's on, uh, and I always leave it on. Uh, and then we've obviously got the JPEG quality settings. Um, so, you know, you can really ramp up the compression. Um, but with this, you do need to be careful because obviously the more uh, you compress it, the worse quality your, your JPEG is going to appear. Um, so, you know, let's set that to 30%, for example. And let it do its thing. So you'll notice we've, we've managed to save the save out. Uh, let's have a look at that. Now that's on, that's at 805 kilobytes on 30%. And if we go and look at one of the ones we saved earlier, uh, you can see that's 1.7 meg and that was when the compression rating was at uh, around 60% wasn't it so you can see there's there's quite a big saving there but I think if we um, if we looked at the two files let's grab this one uh, if we looked at the two files side by side uh, in quick look we may yep I can see this here you can see some um, there's quite a lot of artifacts appearing in the in the more compressed one um, and you can see a little bit of banding up here I mean I don't know how well this will come out on the video um, but you know as a as a thumbnail or an image I 30% it actually looks uh, it looks pretty good um, so it really depends what you want so you're gonna have to to play around with this setting depending on how compressed uh, you want images uh, for me I generally as a general rule of thumb I leave it around 60% 
So the other options we have in here are convert PNGs into JPEGs. This is very handy, you know, if you share a lot of screenshots because you can just drop them onto Squash and it will convert them into JPEGs for you. That's a, that's a great little option. Um, we also have PNG compression. Um, PNGs take a long time to compress because uh, they're generally large files and just the way the compression works is fairly slow. Um, and you can use this option here to compress the PNGs even further. But again, this is uh, on a large PNG, uh, this will take a long time. You know, if you've got a 10 meg PNG, you could be waiting minutes for it to compress. Um, so I generally leave that off. Um, and also, I'm, I'm not really in the habit of compressing PNGs. Um, I think it's fine to run smaller images through here and it works great. But generally, uh, for me, I I'm usually convert the PNGs into JPEGs, but that's just because of the nature of my work and I tend to be sharing a lot of um, screenshots, etc. Um, so there we go. So that was a quick roundup of uh, the preferences available in Squash. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next video.